After the divorce was settled, I started living with my daughter. However, about six months later, an incident occurred. I was at home with my daughter on my day off. Then I received a phone call from my mother. My ex-wife and ex-mother-in-law came to my parents' house all of a sudden, and they came inside without permission. I hurriedly got ready and went to my parents' house. When I arrived at my parents' house, I found my ex-wife and ex-mother-in-law sitting on the living room sofa, arm in arm, waiting for me. I had no idea why they had come. What are you doing in my parents' house all of a sudden? When I asked her that, she made a surprising remark. I want the money I lent you back. My name is Brian, a 40-year-old office worker. I've been married to my wife, Jennifer, for 14 years. My daughter was born at about the same time I got married. She was already in middle school. The three of us were living happily together as a family, and I thought we would always be a heartwarming family. I met my wife at a blind date. I was immediately attracted to her because she was friendly, kind, and cheerful. She also seemed to like me. We talked in person all through the party. We exchanged contact information at that time. After that, we went on many dates and started dating. A year later, I asked her to marry me, and we got married. I loved her very much, so I was very happy when we decided to get married. I had a group of good friends from high school. Whenever something happened, the four of us would get together. When I reported that I had decided to get married, everyone congratulated me, as if it were their own. And of course, they came to our wedding. I remember they said they wanted to get married too. Then, as if sharing our happiness, they got married one after another. All the members of our close group got married. The group of classmates who were just good friends became a group of married people all at once. And we were laughing and saying things like, suddenly, we've become a very mature group. And then, when I had a baby, they all started having kids one after another. In no time at all, we became a dad group. I kind of felt like we were moving on in life together. I thought we would be friends for the rest of our lives. I had a fulfilling time as a husband and father, but I think I was most fulfilled as a company employee. After graduating from college, I was assigned to the planning and development department of a major company. I was busy every day. The work was hard but very rewarding. Every day was a learning experience with a lot of discoveries. There is a guy in our group who is a stay-at-home dad. You're a workaholic, Brian, but you have a great private life as well. It's as if you have two different bodies, he once told me. According to my friend, I'm like an Iron Man. I wish I had a strong body like an Iron Man, though. My wife and my daughter support and heal me. I'm home. Ah, welcome home, Dad. When my daughter was still little, I would come home from work, and she would greet me with a smile and a hug. I would hug her back, and that was enough to heal me from the exhaustion of the day. Welcome home, Brian. Dinner is ready. Another person who soothes me was my wife. My wife wanted to continue working. She quit her job after our daughter was born and started working part-time. She was working part-time at a cafe at the time. My wife was also taking my daughter to and from school. When I got home from work, she always had my dinner ready. It's really hard to cook when you're tired. I felt really happy and grateful that my dinner was ready. My wife's cooking relieved my body and soul. I take a bath with my daughter and talk about the day's events. My wife was very fulfilling both at work and in my private life. I think I was able to do this because my wife and daughter were very understanding of my work. However, I was spoiled by such a kind wife and daughter. I became even more absorbed in my work. As I achieved results in my work, I was promoted and got a higher position. As a result, I worked more overtime and came home late. This often meant that my daughter was already in bed. Fortunately, my daughter was in the upper grades of elementary school by then. She understood how hard it was to work, and she could do some things by herself. My wife continued to work more shifts at the cafe. She was absorbed in her work, too. I've been into buying beans at all kinds of coffee shops lately, and I bought some today. I bought various cakes at a new cake shop. So, let's eat them with coffee. My wife seemed to be into coffee. She has been studying about roasting types of beans and how to make them, and putting them into practice at her part-time job. That's why she made very good coffee at home. My wife and daughter forgave me and spoiled me for being so passionate about my work, so I didn't realize that our family relationship was slowly getting worse. I came to know about it when my daughter asked me for advice. What is it? What do you want to talk to me about? Actually, I went to a movie in town with some friends from school the other day and saw mom with some guy. What? It wasn't like they were arm in arm or anything, but they seemed kind of intimate. And since last year or so, I often hear her talking on the phone at the time before you come home. Other times she was so absorbed in talking on the phone that she didn't even notice me when I talked to her, and she looked so happy looking at the screen of her phone. 
At first, I thought she was talking to you. I also thought it was you at work on the phone. But after the other day, I started wondering if she was talking with the guy that I saw. My daughter said this with a very sad look on her face. She was already in junior high school at that time, so she was sensitive to such things. She would not be able to handle the shock on her own, and I was definitely in shock too. If my wife, who I thought was putting me and our daughter first, was actually having an affair behind my back, I would be really devastated. I'm sorry, Kate. I didn't know I was making you feel that sad. My life has become a bit work-centered, hasn't it? Yeah, but I know that you're working really hard, and I respect you for that, so don't feel sorry for that. I was very happy to hear such kind words from my daughter. Thanks, Kate. I'll check on it. If mom was really having an affair, I think I would have a divorce. Is that okay with you? When I asked my daughter, she nodded. It's awful if mom was having an affair. Just being with her would make me feel bad. Seeing my daughter say that, I reflected on the fact that I haven't paid much attention to my family. For the sake of my daughter, who had the courage to talk to me, I had to investigate this matter thoroughly. I immediately requested an investigation into my wife's infidelity, then I found out a surprising fact. My wife was having an affair, just as my daughter had said. Of course, there was photographic evidence of the affair. However, what was surprising was her lover. It was Richard, one of my good friends from my high school days. I was more shocked than the fact that my wife was having an affair. I was actually betrayed by someone I thought I had been good friends with and trusted for a long time. Richard was a stay-at-home dad and was the last of our group to get married. His children were still small, around 5 years old, and yet he was having an affair with my wife without taking care of his own child? When I got the proof of the affair, I was so shocked that I couldn't move for a while. If I hadn't been in my room, my daughter or my wife would have seen me and it would have been a big problem. I'm not ready to show my wife yet and I couldn't show such a picture to my daughter. I took a deep breath and managed to calm down. Then, one of my good friends informed me that he got a new job. I thought it was a good opportunity and suggested that we all get together. Richard wouldn't be alarmed if it wasn't my idea to get together, and my friends asked everyone to get together, which was exactly what I wanted to do. I was to meet Richard, my wife's lover, three weeks later. In the meantime, I hurriedly hired a lawyer and prepared for the divorce. I told my daughter the results of the investigation and told her that we were getting a divorce, so on our days off, we went to see a new room to live together. In no time, it was the day of the gathering. First, we listened to our friend about his new job, and then everyone gave an update on what was going on in their lives. Richard didn't seem to know that I knew, and we talked normally. You guys all have new changes in your lives. I'm a stay-at-home dad, so I just go about my daily life as usual. But you don't have to work, Richard. Your wife makes enough money, another friend said. I'm grateful for that, but I still feel bored though. We've had enough to drink, so I guess it's about time. That's why you have an affair with someone else's wife, huh? Not only Richard, but others got speechless at my words. Brian, what do you mean? Richard was pale and silent. Another friend asked me. Richard is having an affair with my wife. What? You must be kidding, right? Richard would never do that kind of thing. They tried to cover for Richard, knowing that they were on his side. Richard tried to play along. The that's right! What are you talking? Richard? I'm sure you've mistaken me for someone else. Well, I knew he was going to try and get away. Really? Then, let's see if they think I'm wrong or not. I took out pictures from my bag. My friends were surprised and speechless when they saw the pictures I laid on the table. Oh no, Richard, why? Richard probably didn't think I even had the pictures as evidence. He covered his mouth with his hand, unable to hide his surprise. I was really shocked. Why did you have an affair with my wife? Richard seemed to think he couldn't escape. I'm- I'm sorry. Actually, I happened to walk into a cafe where Jennifer worked and talked with her, then I started going there. My wife makes a lot of money, but after we got married, she stopped caring for me so much. I was lonely. Richard started talking. But even if you had such a reason, you can't have an affair, and having an affair with your friend's wife is out of the question. I proceeded with my story, not caring about how sorry Richard looked. I'm sorry for everyone else, but I have to say that I'll demand compensation from Richard. I also put a content certified letter in the mailbox at Richard's house today. I'm sure your wife is checking it by now. Oh no, why did you do such a terrible thing? I'm doing a terrible thing? You are a married man with a child, but you had an affair with your friend's wife. That's terrible. You should be punished accordingly and pay for what you did. When I said this, Richard just looked down with a pale face. We can't trust you either, Richard. Other friends said the same thing, and we left the restaurant, leaving Richard behind. Now that my revenge against Richard was over, my wife was next. 
I was sure she would have heard from Richard. When I got home, my wife came to the door, looking panicked. Hey, what's going on? What? Richard called me. About your affair? D don't say it like that. You're such an asshole. You play the good wife, but you're having an affair behind my back. No, that's not true, but Richard has a family too, so why did you tell his wife about it? You tell me that too? I guess people who have affairs have a similar way of thinking. You think that as long as I don't know about it, there is no problem. You did something wrong, so everything has to be made public and you have to be punished for it. That's why I'm divorcing you and demanding compensation and child support. Since there was already evidence of adultery, there was no way for her to get away with it. My wife agreed to the divorce, but was reluctant to pay compensation and child support. When I told her that I hired a good lawyer and that I was prepared to go to court to fight for the compensation and child support, and she finally agreed to pay them. Thus, I divorced my wife. I sold the house I'd been living in and moved into a new apartment with my daughter. I have filled a claim for compensation from my ex-wife and Richard to pay me three million each. I also demanded child support from my ex-wife. After the divorce was settled, I started to live alone with my daughter. As expected, the incident lingered with me for quite a while, but the wounds healed little by little. However, about six months later, an incident occurred. I was at home with my daughter on my day off. Then I received a phone call from my mother. My ex-wife and ex-mother-in-law came to my parents' house all of a sudden, and they came inside without permission. My father was out, so she hurriedly called me. I rushed to my parents' house. When I arrived at my parents' house, I found my ex-wife and ex-mother-in-law sitting on the living room sofa, arm in arm, waiting for me. I had no idea why they had come. What are you doing at my parents' house all of a sudden? When I asked her that, she made a surprising remark. I want the money I lent you back. I never owed you any money. I paid 1.5 million for your wedding. Divorce is a fraud. If it were true, I would sue you for marriage fraud, but all you have to do is return the 1.5 million in settlement. My ex-wife was making impossible demands. My ex-mother-in-law also said, You should pay us back as soon as possible. I believe that after the divorce, my ex-wife got a full-time job at a cafe where she worked. As I recall, the wages at the cafe were quite low. She must have been having financial difficulties. That's why she was making this unreasonable request. I'll tell you something. We were the main couple at the wedding, and I paid more for the rest of our married life than you did. If you calculate the total, I think I am paying a lot more than 1.5 million yen, so don't embarrass me by making impossible demands. Even when I said this and tried to kick them out, they didn't move at all. Then, my father came home. My father seemed to have received a call from my mother and came back in a hurry. What are you guys doing here? Though my ex-wife seemed to be frightened of my father, who was yelling, she explained the same thing as before. My father listened in silence. He was beyond angry and seemed to be taken aback at her unbelievable demand. First of all, it was your fault. You were the one who had an affair. Stop making such an impossible demand and just leave. My father tried to make them leave, but my ex-wife got on her knees and begged. Please, Brian, I want you to lend me money. I have to pay compensation not only to you, but to Richard's wife as well. It's more than I can handle. Will you please lend me a million yen? And to ask for money after all this time? I said, I can't do it, so go home, I told her coldly. But my ex-mother-in-law said, That's enough! You were responsible for how things didn't go well in your marriage, too. She insisted that I was obligated to lend her money. The situation was not going anywhere. Then my father said, Okay, I'll get you the money, so just wait. Then he went to another room. Hey, what are you doing? I hurried to follow him, but he was smirking. We have a lot of money. Let's give them money. I was convinced when I saw my father open the closet and take out something. Well, this was interesting. My father put a wad of bills in an envelope and handed it to my ex-wife. My ex-wife and ex-mother-in-law left with satisfied looks on their faces. Then, just as they left, we immediately locked the door and called the police. The two went outside and then seemed to check the contents of the envelope. They immediately came back and started banging on the front door. What do you mean? This is money from the game of life. I don't want this wad of fake money. My ex-wife shouted angrily. I laughed and said to my ex-wife and her mother through the front door, Since we have so much money, I thought I'd share it with you, I told them. Then my ex-wife said, Are you kidding me? And banged on the front door harder and harder. It sounded as if she was kicking, but they didn't seem to think this would cause them trouble. The police arrived just as my ex-wife was kicking the front door and caught her red-handed. Neighbors gathered around. A lot of people saw the arrest of my ex-wife and ex-mother-in-law. In the end, my ex-wife did not get any money. She also had to pay a fine for the arrest and for the damage to her front door. 
Furthermore, it seems that one of the people who saw the arrest was a regular at the cafe where my ex-wife worked. Words got out immediately and his ex-wife was fired. She is currently back at her parents' house, unable to find a job. Her parents-in-law are paying compensation and child support on her behalf. I have issued a restraining order against my ex-wife and her family. If anything happens, I will call the police and they will come immediately. And now, I am living happily with my daughter. I will continue to work hard and watch over my daughter. It's bad enough to have an affair alone, but to make a move on a good friend of one's husband and to barge into his parents' house and lash out on them are just impossible. I feel like he should have been arrested and lost his job. I'm sure you've been through a lot. I hope you and your daughter can spend happy days together from now on. Thank you for watching. How did you like today's story? Please subscribe to our channel. See you in the next story.